All right, guys, Touch Crow back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And with the New York Subliners taking another major L in their matchup against Los Angeles Grillers last night, questions have been raised as to what exactly is wrong with this team right now. And Formal has a few words for Crimson's communication and what exactly could be an issue with their roster. Very much interested in your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. It's the best thing you can do. Tell the channel reach new people. And please do subscribe as well if you haven't yet already. First of all, this is from the flank right, which third game mode, fist fight on stage. Maybe that's better than control because to be fair I've actually found Vanguard quite entertaining to watch the last few days but um look if we don't get more maps soon it's going to be a challenge watching Tusker and Gamma 2 control I'm pretty sure this entire year with any luck that will arrive sometime soon this also to mention Jackie Felling deciding to move on from the CDL this is sad news because she did such a great job like player relations and stuff behind the scenes even I'm pretty sure the MLG days I think she was there like just running the show behind the scenes at like um, to be Anaheim right and well she decided to move on so that's a disappointment right and she does go into detail exactly right here and the final tweet I thought was quite telling. We've seen this a few times now. I did the best I could with, you know, what I was given to work with, right? Basically saying, look, like, um, we tried our best here, but we don't get the most resources in the world. This was just worth mentioning, though, because um, I think Ace pointed this out on the flank a couple of days ago. There's, um, well, as she says, of course, finally getting a true ranked mode would not have been possible without these guys, which apparently is coming soon. So, yeah, with any luck, whenever this ranked play does arrive, we're hoping maybe the 14th of February when Season 2 drops, or shortly after that one, it actually is going to be a proper ranked mode. The problem is it's just come so far after launch that um, the hype has basically disappeared at this point which um, I mean they matter. they pull this off every year right so congratulations once again this also from Cami from their series up against Seattle didn't get time to look at this last night because there was so much other chaos going on but uh, again he's talking about the pings in these matches so lots of complaints about the online situation right now it is good of course that no one gets eliminated from the major as a result of these but if you start in losers and um, part of that might be because I even talked about this in yesterday's video right that I felt like uh, being in Toronto that's going to be a disadvantage compared to the Seattle guys based in Texas and Cami reckons like uh, there's maybe a 15 ping difference here between them between the 40 of the ultra guys and 25 for um well for the Seattle guys which of course is going to make some difference Cami goes on to explain like people seem to think of making excuses like we made other mistakes as well but um obviously this isn't ideal by any means it's online cards like um this is why teams are based in Texas right to get this type of advantage of course the Toronto guys are going to be based in the home market that's what the organization wants to do but um still other organizations have gone down in different routes to get this kind of edge that helps them get better seeding for the major. But definitely the players don't seem to be too happy with the way the CDL is organizing the servers because I think there used to be like a veto thing. The teams would be able to like kind of choose which servers they wanted to ban. Now the CDL just straight up decides what servers the teams are going to play on. And um, I mean, yeah, some teams seemingly still get some advantage from it. Haven't seen anything from Alex Penn as of yet explaining this as he did with the kind of Florida situation we looked at yesterday. Let's talk then about this New York series that went down last night. So firstly, before the series even begins, Grimsix was on a rampage and Jacob, hey, are you guys going to warm us up? or should I publicly tweet about you being late to our scrim? Of course, by tweeting this, he's done exactly that. Yo, crim, calm down, bro. So, of course, um, I guess they were late or whatever reason. Los Angeles Thieves to warm up the New York guys for their game. And, uh, well, of course, maybe that didn't really work out too well for the New York guys when they got into the match. Los Angeles Thieves, though, have a difficult game coming up later today that we will dive into. But, um, yeah, this series was honestly kind of crazy. I thought New York here might just about win this one. I thought it was going to be a pretty close series. There were so many game fives yesterday, right? This does go to a game four. But, um, yes, the game two was just ridiculously dominant. It was a 6-0. New York just got completely swept away and Neptune dropped a donut. I mean, look at these three players. Plus a seam at the kickoff who went 0-7. Hook, Kami, and Neptune. The three players so far to have dropped donuts here in Vanguard. Like, um, already so many donuts coming through. It definitely does show that some people are struggling on certain maps. This was probably the craziest clip I've seen all year so far. Honestly, without doubt. Like, um, a seam made one of the most ridiculous plays you'll ever see. And um, you would not believe, looking at that kind of kill column right there, that Los Angeles these grillers did not go on to win this round. I have no idea how they managed to collapse in such a massive way, but um, they go up 2-0, and it seemed just decides. Like, honestly, it was really impressive. Like, he clearly had a, well, he was out for blood here against New York, right? Because he was on their team last year, and they obviously decided not to continue with him. I mean, look at this. He just tells the third guy, just absolutely destroys Neptune, goes into the control point as well, gets so many more kills. At this point, he's only on an eight streak. He gets another four, I'm pretty sure, in this streak as well, and um, even a kill on Clayster here as well is just spectacular. So at this point, it just really 
really feels like, okay, wow, this is game over. They're going to win an offense. In fairness, like, offense is clearly very hard to win, but it can be done. And even look at this, like, Clayson just gets completely snapped on. He's out of there. And, um, yeah, seem just getting one over on his former team. But would you believe it? Like, at this point, they were at, like, 24 to 12 in live counts. It seems on a 12 streak. And still, they don't win the rounds. Like, um, I don't know what they're playing at, to be honest, the rest of the team. Like, they just seem to be non-existent. I think they had a massive life advantage. And um, then they completely threw away the life advantage at the end. I think one of them got out of the control point or something. It was complete chaos. They went on to lose the last round as well and going into a game four. Like, I've no idea how Los Angeles Grillers, given what a scene was doing here, managed to lose this map, but that they did. But um, still, they went on to win the series regardless in the next map on Tuscan Hardpoint, I believe. And as the scene says, hey, subliners, you dropped something. Because, well, it was similar this time last year when the subliners themselves said that to the Rocker when they dropped a seam. And of course, the subliners do the same thing. He certainly had this one ready in the drafts to a lot of traction on the tunnel. So yeah, Asim understandably talking his trash, especially because of how they played this series. I mean, look at this. Like Statistically, this is pretty absurd. Asim was, uh, had a 1.4, plus 31, 12k damage. Like Gunners was plus 19 as well. Slasher was holding his own, and uh, Hook was kind of just doing what was required. On the other side, I honestly felt like, I mean, Hydra Lake. Hydra's unbelievable. We already know it. Like this guy, whenever you tune into his POV, he's dropping digits. But um, I mean, still, Crimsix actually had the most damage on their team. I really felt like Crimsix and Hydra were kind of the only two guys fighting back really for New York at times because um, I mean yeah Neptune and Claystar like well, Neptune had a 0.7 Claire had a 0.7 as well like it really felt I mean 8k damage only on Neptune as well like honestly seemed super lost on the map at times and um, especially because New York's next three matches coming up over the next couple of weeks are Los Angeles Thieves Boston and FaZe like um, that is not an easy run this I was talking about yesterday really felt like kind of a must win for almost both of these teams they both have difficult runs it's LAG that come out with it and um, as Krim says like he's not happy at all I don't know what kind of performance that was out of us absolutely pathetic and then um, yeah just seems to be Neptune like I don't know just seems super uncomfortable on the map Claystar hasn't been playing particularly well either it's Hydra and Crimson doing most of the work and I'll just share this clip that came up from formerly a couple of days ago this is actually in their matchup against Seattle but kind of similar problems there right they got 3 0 by Seattle looks kind of at similarly bad right in this series up against Los Angeles Grillers and Crim's basically telling the guys in this listening like look calm down like you know take your time all this type of stuff trying to keep these guys composed but um you know formal isn't necessarily too convinced that it worked out to the benefit of the team in this case yeah 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 we're good we're good travis calm down <laughs> look travis dude travis just was full oh god dude so so yeah so yeah so yeah so yeah so, yeah, so, yeah, so like like he's like all right i'll get a free kill i'll get a free kill and he hears yo paco travis calm down paco travis and then he hears that and he's like wait what yeah he, as the guy as the guy we tried he was just singing like what'd you say and just instant died for it and now he just lost full Look at him, 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 look at him. So as Sasha goes on to point out, GG's New York 1-3-1 in the opening weekend 1-1. One one. A huge W for the squad, because of course that's the thing, New York now they're 0-2. They're going to need to improve things drastically, even if they can go 2-3 out of those uh, well, last matches, which is going to be tough. Like, maybe they can beat Boston, they beat them at the, at the kickoff classic, but um, even then, that could be a 1-4, could be a 2-3. That could well set them in loser's bracket to start for the major, which means that there's basically no chance they win it. So they really do have to turn things around very quickly indeed, or, um, well, New York could be an early candidate to make some sort of move right because with Neptune playing the way he has lately like at nowhere near the star caliber that we've seen really from other organizations that have brought in a kind of uh, younger players as well he obviously took some time to get going last year also but um, I mean still definitely this year so far has not looked pretty at all this also a crazy stat really kind of wanted to talk about this Optic Raven series real quick so London since the inception of the CDL shout out round 11 stats was 0 in 11 combined against Empire and Huntsman Optic Chicago that is incredible honestly like um, this is something I seem to remember like Ravens could just never beat Empire and um, they can never beat Huntsman or Optic whenever they play them pretty much. And um, of course yesterday they finally get their first win over Optic Texas. Brand new roster finally got into business and then um, it was great to see the rookies show up and I'm honestly surprised they look so good so early on in the year. Very similar to Seattle right in the way they've constructed their roster seems to be working out so far. Some of the reaction initially of course this didn't age particularly well from Crimson and the New York guys because um, him and the boys I guess had just watched the Optic series and Crimson's kind of saying you know like uh, that makes me pretty happy right seeing Optic lose like that but of course uh, they weren't able to get 3-1 later in the day anyway so um, I mean yeah it didn't really work out too well for the subliners guys but some reaction from the optic fellas as well as Scump says man a tough way to start good games to London lack of coordination in some moments costed us hard and that's the thing right I did a tweet yesterday kind of talking about the solo challenge that optic were making in the round 11 there against London it wasn't necessarily like solo challenge maybe was the wrong way to describe it more like the setup they had was just terrible right they weren't like challenge solo they were just standing in solo positions where they couldn't get traded so when they did get hit 
late and like Dashi was in that corner right. Scum was on the bomb on his own. In fairness, maybe Scum didn't really make too much of a misplay there because he was kind of left in no man's land. And um, there's also a lot to talk about really the decisiveness of the Optic team. I think even uh, Sender was kind of hinting at that in this article that Sean Collins comes out with. That, um, you know, basically Sender was saying that they made rash decisions. They were playing way too fast. Like um, in a way, he'd actually preferred five maps over 3-0 because if they win 3-0, they kind of paper over those cracks and those mistakes. Whereas now they can actually fix up on some of these issues. But um, of course, what? Well, they're going to have to do that relatively quickly. These matches are coming, well, thick and fast. There's another one today they play up against the Minnesota Rocker. But um, yeah, when they had that four versus three, I feel like another team would have just like, stacked up all the bodies, hit out of sight, made something happen. But it does seem like there's a bit of hesitation sometimes for the Optic guys. They're not really too willing to make mistakes and therefore they put themselves in bad spots. And we saw it last year and we've seen it this year again so far. But, um, you know, maybe they can turn things around. Big matchup for these guys coming up later today. Already has been some talk right about, okay, these maps are terrible. The skill gap in this game is non-existent. I want to see more evidence of that, right? Let's just see a few games, because last year in Modern Warfare, people said, okay, there's no skill gap at all in, in these games as well, and then FaZe all of a sudden go on an 11 winning streak, right? And in fairness, already it has kind of been the same teams and the same names, the likes of Seattle, the likes of Sib, right? Who are, you know, dropping crazy numbers on the regular, so I think it's maybe too early to say that uh, there's absolutely zero skill gap in this game, maybe in terms of pure gun skill, but in terms of teams, right, and how team coordination works, I honestly think there's quite a lot to this game, at least what I've seen so far. Some teams do seem to be separate Separating themselves from the pack to at least some degree. But yeah, the maps question is not ideal. But a Warfare 2019 and Vanguard competing for the worst maps of all time. And well, it's a draw right now. Hopefully, some other couple ones come in. And this also from Brian St. Rob because the schedule maker was having a field day, putting a what Minnesota against Texas, Seattle, London, and Atlanta. The first four matches they play. That is going to be a gauntlet for the Minnesota guys. And well, it kicks off today up against Optic Last Hub. These are the three series for the day. Paris versus Mutineers. For whatever reason, Paris love beating Florida. And um, you know, I maybe see it happening again? I don't really know. Florida looked pretty wakeful, honestly, against London, but I feel like Florida are this kind of weird team, where they'll look just awful one series, then they'll come out swinging the next one. But I was honestly impressed by Paris yesterday against FaZe. I think Paris win this series 3-1. to one. Then we've got FaZe versus Los Angeles Thieves. This is very exciting, right? Paris, Florida, that's a nice little warm-up, nice little teaser. Then we get into the juice. FaZe versus Thieves, always spicy, right? Because Simp versus Kenny, right? All this talk about abusing in-game glitches these guys have been going on about the last couple of days. This is certainly a banger. I think I'm going to take FaZe in a 3 two over Thieves. I believe Thieves are playing from Los Angeles. That's probably going to set them at something of a disadvantage. And then the last series, Rocker versus Optic. I do think Optic bounce back here. I'd be very surprised if they go zero in two on the week. I don't think Minnesota are particularly good right now. On what I've seen the last couple of days, I think London are frankly a much better team than Rocker. They were playing pretty much flawless COD yesterday. So I think the Optic win this one 3-1 and uh, they bounce back to some degree. But definitely intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Tell us the YouTube gods. It's a good video. I was like you should see it as well and upgrow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care. And I will see you next time.